Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Clem and I can't find my glasses, but that's not the topic of the video. I have made my own thing and I want to sell it. So uh, yeah, I was like not very satisfied with the options that I have to sell, so I made my own shop. And because others should sell on there too, I thought it was very confusing to like get all the orders on like packing slips and stuff and then pack your orders and uh, yeah, you could get very confused very fast. So let's build a warehousing system. Yeah, it's true, I made my own website to sell stuff where makers can sell makery stuff. And I made an API for that available. It's based on the WooCommerce REST API, so like tried and true for selling stuff. And now we put that to good use with this project. We're building a warehousing system, a thing that helps you pack all the orders you get and ship them out and update them and make sure you don't miss any of those orders or make any errors during packing. I have worked in retail for about 10 years and we used strings like this with like Unix systems running in emulators, like the very old stuff to do our daily business. And there's a good point for that because they are so simple and focused on their task. You don't have to have loading times. You don't have to move your mouse around. You can just do everything with the keyboard and you can get customers what they want really fast. And the same applies to warehousing systems. If I can make it as simple as possible with as less interaction as possible, then packing is faster, errors are less, and also it doesn't take up much space. So I want this warehousing system to be one button and barcode reader only. And because this is a project that I hope a lot of other people will use in the future to sell their stuff and get organized, I keep it open source and I want to make it doable with like recycled parts, stuff that you have around anyway. It's platform agnostic, you can use any single board computer for it or your standard PC that you use, any barcode reader that you can cheaply find. Oh, and I use like an old screen that was a leftover from a previous project where we built our own Wi-Fi router. That case came with a screen and now we're using the screen. Parts you need for this project is any old single board computer. You can do this on the oldest, weakest model of Raspberry Pi. You can do this on a Latte Panda, on a BeagleBone, whatever you have. You can even use your old laptop. It doesn't take a big toll on the operating system or on the hardware itself. It's just basically a Python script that runs in the terminal. So if your system has a terminal, which pretty much everybody has, then it should be able to accomplish this task. And also you can use any barcode reader you like. I make it specifically work with a barcode reader that scans EAN or GT1N or GTIN, the standard barcodes that we all know only. So if you have a fancier scanner, that would work anyway, but if you only have a very base model, you can still do it. Okay, let's say you are a salamander on smander.com, you have listed your first DIY hardware item that you want to sell, and somebody bought your device and you got an order. So now you can just download a PDF with the invoice and the packing slip and pack your order. And I first thought, hey, you could parse that, that PDF and extract like the data from it and then put that in a database and make that accessible. And then I thought a bit about it and realized I'm a bit stupid because PDFs are not created equal and they can change. So it's not very reliable to parse a PDF uh, that has varying contents. And also, wouldn't it be much nicer if there was a structure where you can identify every single bit in that data set and get the data that you actually want. And yeah, that's a thing and that's called JSON. And that is what APIs deliver. So we're using an API, we're not parsing PDFs. But how do we get that JSON response? Because when you type in just like the thing, the, the URL where it should be on the website, it usually gives you a forbidden error or, or that that thing is not here or permission denied or something. So how do you actually 
talk to an API. Here is some actual footage of me learning how to use an API. Welcome to my computer and to my Python code. This time I'm using PyCharm as my editor because the project is a little bit bigger than usual. First we need to declare what the hell we are doing here. Uh, we are making a command line interface program that lets us uh, execute some API things. So we get our uh, orders from a website, smander.com, which is a web shop that I created where people can sell their stuff. So we log into that API, we receive a token, it's JWT authorized, so it has a JSON web token. And then we take our orders, process those orders, and then we need to pack those orders according to the data in the JSON files. So we have to like check if the barcodes match and stuff. After long fiddling around to make the code work, we can now move on to assembly. So what we take is a screen. Uh, this came, as I said, from a previous project, basically a leftover. I bought a PC with a screen and this is the screen and now we use it. Then we need a barcode reader. I found this really nice model on Element 14. There are different types of barcode readers. Some have only the ability to read GTIN or EAN codes which are basically the standard barcodes that we all know. And then are others that have like an optical unit in there and they can also read QR codes and other kinds of codes. One thing that you have to think about is, do you want it to be able to read all sorts of codes? Because that could introduce errors on some packaging. The GDIN code, the thing that you want that identifies the product, is pretty near some other QR code that maybe leads to a manual. So. Do you want it to be able to read both of those? I'm sure for my warehousing system, I want it to be able to only read the real GTIN codes. So I use a barcode scanner that only does these. I found it on element 14 and I use another project left over, uh, Raspberry Pi 3A+. I don't need anything more than one USB port for the barcode scanner. And I want it to boot up really fast so it only runs the headless version of Raspberry Pi OS, which means it doesn't have a graphical user interface. I only want the command line and I just make a little case with my laser cutter for it, designs the parts in FreeCAD and I also make a holder for the barcode scanner. So I can just plop it in. I'm also modifying the screen a little bit to make it integrate the buttons that I want to use with it. At first I try to use two buttons, one to make the unit boot and to shut it down safely. So I ran into a very weird problem with executing the code on the push of a button. The shutdown command, that works perfectly fine. But starting a Python script from the push of a button is a different beast. So my script uses the input function to get user input via the barcode scanner. And that function expects live interaction with it. And when the operating system tries to launch a Python script on its own, then it expects all the input variables to be present at runtime. My solution to circumvent that, I ask tons of people on the community, on Discord and stuff. And thanks to all these people that helped out, but none of the solutions worked for that problem and I think it's really, it's just a limitation of the input function. So maybe avoid that. But my solution to make this run when I want it to run is to have a barcode that basically has the command in it to run it. And when I scan that barcode, it's for the computer, it's exactly the same as if I have typed it in because any barcode scanner in reality to the computer, it's just a keyboard. One limitation, barcodes can only be so long. So a long command doesn't fit in a barcode or it creates a barcode that is too big to be readable by my scanner. So I also created an alias in uh, Raspberry Pi OS to alias warehouse with the full command string. And that lets me just scan a little barcode that just says warehouse and then it executes the program. That was way too long to get right for such a minor issue, but 
I'm very thankful that we got it figured out. Hi, I'm David from Element 14 to the Electronics Inside. Join me as I tear down toys, tools, appliances, modern, vintage, classics, and even some new releases just to find out what's inside. Enough of that, let's try out the warehousing system. This is it. And I just started with a push on the power button. And yes, this is a real-time booting process. You can see the Pi starting up. And we're in like Flynn. And now if I would like to demonstrate the error, if I would push the start button, I get like a terminal error, but if I use my scanner, then I can scan the warehousing barcode. It has acquired the token and now it says it already has uh, downloaded the first orders. We have a few dummy orders in there. Uh, you just have to scan something to continue, so no other buttons needed than the barcode scanner itself. I just scan random barcodes here. It now goes through all the orders so I can see all the stuff that has been downloaded. And we have to pack our first order, number 1359, and it's two Myomix engineering resins. Okay, that's nice. Scan item one. That's the first one, that is correct. But let's say, oh, what if I get the wrong item? Uh, some IPA. Oh, it's an incorrect item. Ah, oh, that's too bad. Maybe I didn't scan it correctly. Nope, still incorrect. It wants me to scan the correct item. Oh yeah, there it is. And, oh, we have another one. Order number 1359, and it's also four times engineering resin. Thank you for the order. I have number one, I have number two, then I make a little error. Oh no, I have ordered the wrong one, and it's incorrect. Oh, thank God I found another one. And now I don't have any more. So what if I don't have that many of an order? Well, I can just scan the cancel barcode here and then it says aborted and it uh, memorizes which item is missing from the packing. We have the next one. We have API test product number one, which is uh, like a test thing that I made. So of course I don't have that here. And if I scan a regular old item, uh, yeah, that's incorrect. I don't have the API test one. And I couldn't even confuse it with IPA instead of API. Because this one also doesn't work. I have to abort it because I can't pack that order. So I abort that item and the second one as well. And oh, it needs four of them. And we have another API test product. I don't have that. I know it now. And now we have the conclusion. We have completed our orders. But we have also incomplete orders. In 1359, there is engineering resin number four missing. In 1335, there is API test product number one, number two, and number three, and number four missing. And then we have an order 1428 with another API test product that I don't have. Ah, too bad. But now, do I want to save a protocol? If I scan yes, it saves a protocol to the SD card and I can also get that over the network if I want and I can also print the protocol if I scan yes but sadly I don't have a printer connected. By the way it directly uh, uses the LPR print function so if you have any printer connected it will just print. It doesn't care for your model so it could look weird but it does the job. And now that I'm finished packing I can just Put my scanner back here, push the power button, 
and it shuts down safely. <sighs> All the ore is done for now. Time to produce more resin to get out to the people. Well, we only have so much time and there is so much to learn about how to use APIs and about all the code that goes into that project. So we made bonus videos on the Element 14 community. You can download all the files, all the code that you need on the Element 14 community for free. You can also go there to talk about new projects that I want to do, to see upcoming videos and to discuss with all the people around there about new projects and stuff that you can use for them. I hope you find this useful. Maybe you use an API for your next project or maybe you use this API in selling awesome stuff online. I think it will make my life packing shipments a lot easier. I gotta go, there's another project waiting for me.